Hey folks, Brendan here from Blue Light going live to you inside the Blue Light Police Recruitment Facebook support group and support group for those of you who are actually in the police already and progressing your careers. So there's almost 22,000 of you in this group and it's um, always awesome going live with you this Friday evening. And if you're watching this on the replay and you're thinking, what is this Facebook group, then check the links below and you'll find the links to join the Facebook group. It's completely free. And some of you are just joining now. I, I never really announce these. I should, I should have a set time, shouldn't I? And so I can already see some of you joining. Uh, we've got Max and Stephanie and Dan. It'd be awesome if you could put something in the comments in terms of either questions or any comments about how awesome the Facebook group is. You know, well, I'm presuming you think it's awesome. I'm hoping you think it's awesome. Anyway, subject of this live, what's going on with police recruitment? This has been one hell of a week for a lot of my clients who've had some terrible, terrible, awful news. And I'm going to go into some of that news in a moment for you. And then what I'm going to talk about is the three things that you can do now, three th pieces of action that you can take to ensure that you don't have an offer of, well, it's not even an offer, but a probable start date of spring 2024 really seriously that's a year and a half away so what's been going on well um several forces are already starting to let some of my clients down um i'll give you some examples uh, derbyshire constabulary have cancelled their future cohorts for the ipple dipple and have said that it's probably going to be spring 2024 now and they've cited that um, there was a lot of interest, uh, duh. Uh, but the other thing is interesting is they've actually put in their, their um, email that they don't have enough money. There's a funding problem. So that's telling us something about what the next financial year might look like. Uh, even the Somerset with their future detectives who were told that it'd be an autumn, as in now, <laughs> autumn, winter, as in now, uh, 2022 intake. Uh, no, they're all full. Um, we might, might have an intake in autumn 2023. Now, we're going to hear the, the words may and might a lot. Uh, Nottinghamshire Constabulary cancelled their early 2023 intakes. No reason given. And nothing about what's going to happen next. So there's several of my clients, more than several of my clients, who just have no idea what's going on. The comments have been pitiful. Metropolitan Police, the um, detective process, um, they're still recruiting into it. They're still running the bolt-on for the direct entry detective. But they've already told a lot of successful candidates that Actually, we don't have any more intakes into 2023 for direct entry detective. We might have one in the summer. Might. There's that word again. So what you can do is you can become a uniform PC for two years and then we'll guarantee that you become a detective. What? <laughs> what kind of nonsense is that? <laughs> and I'm also aware that some PC candidates have been told that in 2023 for the Met, uh, it's not that there won't be intakes, it's just that they're not quite sure what the numbers are going to look like at the moment. So we're seeing this play out right across the country. And my prediction is we're going to see more of it. Why? Well, you know, it's been a great time for police recruitment. It's been a great time for my clients because they've had this incredible opportunity to be part of the 20,000 uplift. So normally in the police service in England and Wales, I'm not talking about Scotland and Northern Ireland, Normally in England and Wales, the police will recruit in those two countries about 8,000 officers a year. And that accounts for the officers who are leaving, either through retirement or resigning. And there's always a, a churn there. And it's invariably it's around seven or 8,000 officers. And that's traditionally what the police have recruited. Along comes the 20,000 uplift, which means that over three years, we're going to recruit an additional 20,000 officers. I know, they're not additional, they're just replacing the... Well, they don't even replace the 21,000 that were cut over the past decade. But it's good news, because it means that 
the police officers will be joining, the police service will have more than 120,000, it'll go up to about 140,000. And it also means that um, for those of you who have been applying over the past couple of years, it's been great because the police, instead of recruiting about seven or 8,000, have been having to recruit around 15, 16, 17,000 each year. The problem now is that we're nearing the end of that 20,000 uplift. To succeed in getting the funding for the targets set by the government for each particular force, they must have a warrant card in the pocket by the end of March 2023. We're now in December 2022. So you might be thinking, well, that's uh, three months away, over three months away. There's plenty of time. No, there isn't. Because if you're still in the recruitment process at the moment, you might have to do an interview, then you've got vetting, fitness, medical, all of that takes time, too much time, I know, too much time, and then you need to be offered a start date with a reasonable amount of notice so you can give notice in the workplace. What this means is that just about every constabulary has probably filled their cohorts for the 20,000 uplift, which means they're now looking into 2023. What's happened for next year? When I say next year, 2023, I mean the financial year that starts in April. That's how the police work. They work on a financial year. They're not quite sure what their budget is going to look like. They know it's not going to look good. The Chancellor of the Exchequer has already said there's going to be cuts to public services and there's going to be increased taxes. Those increased taxes are not to pay for more public services. And I don't think that education and health are going to take massive hits because they've already taken massive hits because of COVID. And just look at the look at both of them. They're both on their knees at this moment in time. And I know you're going to say the police are on their knees as well, but the government will justify cuts to the police by saying they've had funding for 20,000 additional officers over the past three years. Now it's time for them to start delivering. Now they've got those extra officers, they're going to want to see some results. And that's part of the deal. That's just the way government works. And so what that means is budgets will reduce. Even if there's not an increase in the budget, that's still a 10% decrease in the budget because of the way that raging inflation is working at the moment. Police officers, staff, PCSOs will get a pay rise. Not quite sure what that pay rise is going to be but it's certainly not going to be 1% or 2%, at least I hope it won't be, because inflation is raging at 10% plus at this moment in time. And other public sector are being offered 5 6 7%. So the police will probably be on par with that, but that's not to come until later on in 2023. But forces will be starting to think about that now, which is why you've got forces like Derbyshire being open about it, saying we just don't have enough money. We're not anticipating that we're going to have the funding to be able to deliver the cohorts, the intakes that we've planned. I expect to see more of this. Now, I've been in the police sector for 37 years now. I joined in 1985. I retired almost 10 years ago, but for the past 10 years, I've been helping people, supporting people in the police recruitment process. I've been coaching and supporting people to succeed in promotion boards and specialist interviews now for 26 years. I've had enormous amounts of success, incredible amounts of success. Every day I get emails and messages from people say, I've been promoted, thank you very much, I can't believe it. I've got through, I've got my dream job. You know, this is why I do what I do. It's just amazing to be the um, person behind you, the, the friend that's helping you to succeed in achieving your dreams. I mean, I just, I, I can't put words on it. The, the pride behind that is just incredible um, but I've also seen the disappointment so 10 years ago I saw this play out I saw it play out 10 years ago I saw it play out when austerity kicked in and forces started doing exactly what they're doing now it's like history is repeating itself and then we will have announcements of things like we're just not going to recruit anymore or we're going to recruit lower numbers uh, Greater Manchester Police as an example only recruited 40 a year Four zero. Some forces just didn't recruit for about two or three, four years. Some who have a healthy churn, like Kent, I think Kent is the only force that recruited all the way through austerity. That's the only one. The only one. They must have so many 
Kyungin service officers. Um, but that's the other thing that the police will probably welcome is the chance to take a bit of a breather because at this moment in time, there's so many Jungian service officers, it's putting an enormous amount of strain on the service. So my prediction, and it's not a prediction, it's a, I made this prediction a while back and it's starting to come true now, forces are going to start cancelling intakes, reducing the size of their cohorts, and into 2023, they're going to use words like might and maybe. So, uncertainty. How are we going to manage this? And please do ask questions. I can see there's so many of you are watching. Uh, please do comment. Please do ask questions. I'll do my best to answer them for you. And I'll just do a little run through in a moment of who's watching. So that's awesome to have you on board. In a moment, I'm going to give you three things that you can do. Three actions that you can take now actions that you can take now, today, to ensure that you've got the best chance possible of getting one of the intakes in 2023, or even in one of the maybe might be intakes that you are going to succeed in achieving one of those positions. So let's just do some quick shout outs first and answer any questions that might be there. So we've got Stephanie, Max and Dan watching, Lucy, Chris, Laura, Zach, Callum and Callum saying, uh, did you see the minutes from the College of Policing stating they didn't want to extend the apple dipple because it would ruin the reputation of the College of Policing due to removal of the mandatory qualifications by the Home Secretary? Yes, I did see it. There's a lot of stuff there about them worrying about their reputation rather than worrying about how they're going to deliver an awesome service to ensure that police officers are well trained and well equipped in terms of the skills they need to cope with the future. Yeah, it was a lot about them, wasn't it? Uh, Christine's watching, Shell and Cara, good evening to you, Ethan, Mohammed, Lou, Heather, Rich, Eric, Reese, Jessica, Adina, oh my goodness, it's so, so good having you all on board, and there's more of you as well, I'm, I'm just going to stop there, so it's great having you all on board, if you've got any questions, please do ask, so, three things, oh and by the way, if you're watching this on the replay, then ask questions in the comments, I will get back to you. Um, oh, before the three things, so Kara's just asking a question. Hello, I've received the SJT competency interview, written assessment and briefing exercise all in one go. Is this potentially because of the budget cuts going into April 2023 or is this normal? No, Kara, that's, that's what it is. So this is the online assessment centre. These are all the exercises in the online assessment centre. You'll have been given a whole week to do them in. Although you may have an email that says we would prefer you to do them all in one day. Uh, don't listen to that. Um, because that's for the College of Policing's benefit, not yours. If you try and do them all in one day, that's just going to pickle your head. It's just going to pickle your head. So spread them out across the week. And Cara, this is a shameless plug. <laughs> but it's what I do. I love helping to support people. But I make a living out of it as well. So please do come and join us on the Online Assessment Centre Plus webinars course. This is where we look to get 90 plus percent. We don't look for a pass. 90 plus percent. That's what we aim for and it's achievable. And every day I get messages from people who've been on that webinar programme to say 96 percent, 94 percent, 98 percent last week, 98 percent overall. Can you believe that? They got 100% in their interview, and I think it was something like 94, 95% in the stage three. So, amazing. Uh, so come and join us, Cara. Uh, I'll show you exactly what you need to do to pass it. And, and passing it now, and passing it well is important. That's the third, third point I'm gonna make. Uh, so, uh, Rich and Rachel. Rachel's saying, hi, Brendan, hope you're doing well. Katie's watching. Shiro and Eric is asking a question here. Um, so actually, I'm going to do some questions before I do the three things. Eric's saying, do you know when the traditional route will come into effect or is the degree still going to be around for a while? This is a hot topic in my team and my station. So I'm following this very closely and I'm looking at the minutes from the College of Policing and I'm looking at all the announcements that are coming from forces, uh, National Police Chiefs Council, College of Policing. Um, when we talk about traditional route, what we mean is the initial police learning and development programme. Um, there's four, four routes in at the moment. Um, no, hang on, Four, no, three routes in. The fourth route is the Ipple Dipple, but that's about to go, but it's about to come back. Yeah, bear with me. So the first route is you've got a degree in policing that's recognised by the College of Policing. It's got to be recognised by the College of Policing under the PEQF, which is the Police Educational Qualifications Framework. If you've got that degree, then you can apply to join the police as long as police forces are actually recruiting through that route, because a lot of them don't. 
I know it's frustrating. I've got this degree. I've paid all this money for it, but no one's recruiting for this pathway. Um, second route, this is more common as the police constable degree apprenticeship. This is when you will need a certain number of A-levels or UCAS points. Very few forces just want GCSEs. Um, the Met's looking at some kind of year before you do that. So it's almost like a foundation degree. Um, but that's not, uh, there's no certainty around that at the moment. Um, Merseyside Police uh, used to, I don't know if they still do, they just wanted to have two GCSEs. I'm not quite sure how universities manage with that. Um, but that's the route for the police constable degree apprenticeship. This is when you do a degree whilst you are working as a police officer. It's really challenging, really challenging. Third route is the degree holder entry programme. So you join as a police officer because you've got a degree in anything and you do a diploma in policing. So your student officer period is two years. If you do the PCDA, it's three years. Then the, the fourth route is the initial police learning and development programme. This is what existed before the obsession with academia. And it is an obsession. I think it's great that people should have the opportunity to do a degree, but they shouldn't be forced into it and it shouldn't be a requirement to be a police officer. It's not a requirement to join, but after that three years, when you do the PCDA, if you don't qualify with a degree, if you don't get your degree, you're out. You're out because you're not qualified. And I know different universities run the PEQF in different ways and I've seen some of the assignments and I've thought, what on earth has that got to do with anything to do with operational policing? You know, having to write essays about the counter-terrorism strategy for the United Kingdom. What? what? You know, it, it, of interest, yes. Do you need to know that whilst you're pounding a beat of Trafford in Manchester? No. Um, anyway, I don't want to go off at a tangent. So the Upple Dipple was the old way. There used to be a qualification wrap around it. City and Guilds offered a diploma in policing at level six. So it's not that you wouldn't get a qualification at the end of it. It's just that you didn't get the one that the government was obsessed by and the College of Policing are absolutely loving, which is the academic, 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 academic. And so, um, what a lot of police and crown commissioners have been asking for recently and what they got from the Home Secretary was a commitment to open up the recruitment process to people who haven't got a degree and don't want to do a degree. Although the College of Policing came back and said, yes, we're going to develop this now. And it'll look like the degree programme, but you just won't get a degree at the end of it. I don't get that. <laughs> Why would you go to a university to study when you're not going to get a degree at the end of it and study the same programme and do the same essays and do the same assignments. Uh, it's going to be an absolute dog's dinner. Whatever they produce will be an absolute dog's dinner because they want to retain their cosy relationship with universities. And the PCDA and the DHEP is a way of doing that. Um, I'm a big fan of degrees. I went back to university halfway through my um, career and went to study for a master's in education where I focused on training and evaluation. I loved it. It's enabled me to do a lot of the work I do now, which well, helped. It's not enabled, but it's helped. Um, did I need to do it? No. Did it help me as a police officer? Actually, yes, it did. You know, there's a lot of things I introduced, especially as a neighbourhood inspector, which when I go back in time, had its roots in the study that I did, especially in terms of things like um, ongoing qualitative research. Uh, formative evaluation and applying some of those theories to what we did within communities. That's a subject of another video sometime. So those are the routes in. Um, and Lord knows what dog's dinner the College of Policing are going to make of the, the fourth entry route, which will be you don't need a degree and you don't have to have a degree. Um, I don't know what they're going to do. No one knows. My contacts in forces are scratching their heads thinking, oh my God, this could be awful. And they've not been consulted yet. So that's interesting as well. It will continue to be a hot topic, Eric. Uh, Adina's saying I've started the training for the special constable role within the Met. That's awesome for you, Adina. Now I want to join as a regular police officer. Do I have to make another application? Yes, you do. Uh, yes, you will, Adina. Yes, you will. Uh, drop me a line and I'll help you out with that. Um, so Chris is saying I'm just watching just out of interest as to how things might pan out. Yeah. Um, um, and you're starting your first day next week. That's awesome, Chris. Yes, that's what I love. Brilliant. Dan's saying, can I apply to other forces? Right, uh, we'll come to that in a moment. It's my three things. I'm going to get to the three things. Ash and Jody watching and Eric. 
All right, okay, into the three things. You've been very patient, haven't you, whilst I've been going through some of the different questions and getting on my hobby horse about things. So, the first thing you need to do is to try and get commitment from the force you're applying to. Try and get some commitment from them. We may have an intake in spring 2024. Great, when? Where am I on the waiting list for this? If I continue holding on, am I likely to get one of the places? Or am I likely to be told, mm, actually the cohort's full? So try and pin them down. And if they're vague with you, if they are non-committal, or they just don't reply, like a lot of forces just don't reply. Um, I'm not gonna name names, but several forces I know have got, no, not just several, most forces have got absolutely appalling comms. So if you don't get that commitment, and even, you know, if it's not a firm offer, it's not a commitment. <laughs> It's got to be a firm offer. We are offering you a, p a place, a starting date of. And even then, during austerity, I saw them cancelled, sometimes with just two or three weeks' notice. Cheshire did that. They just dumped a whole cohort. Sussex even measured everyone up for their uniform and then dumped them. So it's time to apply to other forces. If you've got a pass in your online assessment centre, get in touch with other forces. If you can be mobile, do so. Get mobile and start thinking about where else could I go. There may still be forces that have got cohorts that need filling. Get in touch with them, do it now. Email them now. One of my clients has got applications in with 12 forces, 12. And you may think that's crazy, that's ridiculous. Well, not so ridiculous, because the person who has the most options is capable of making the best decisions. This individual's also got applications in with other organisations in the public sector outside of policing. And they're just waiting for the best offer. And they've not accepted it yet. They will soon. They're going to have to. They're going to have to make a commitment soon. But 12 police forces. 12. You can apply to as many police forces as you want. If any, any force says, no, you can't, just quote them in the College of Policing Guidance. Because College of Policing Guidance says, oh, yes, you can. So if you can apply to other forces, transfer your online assessment centre score. The third thing. If you're in the recruitment process at the moment, high marks. You've just got to get the highest marks possible in every stage. You're not just after a pass. You've got to get the most awesome high marks ever. Why? Because if you do pass, you're going to go into what they call a talent pool. Talent pool. What do you think it is? <laughs> Britain's got talent. Um, the police have got talent. Uh, but the talent pool is where you've, you've passed everything you just get into putting a pool of other officers and when they've got intakes available, they'll take people out of that talent pool. But the only way they can do that, by law, it's a stated case that came out of Cheshire about five years ago, four or five years ago. The only way they can do that legally is by your score. They can't do it as in we need more women or we need more black candidates or they can't do any of that. It's only by score. So your marks are so important. Back in the day, several years ago, some of my clients ended up in a talent pool. They applied to other forces just so they could do the assessment centre again to get a higher mark. Then they could go back to their force to say that, look, I've reset the assessment centre. I've got a higher mark now. Does that influence things? And yes, it did. It took them out of the talent pool into the next intake. Because otherwise you'll just sit in it. How do I know this? Because it's happened before. This is history repeating itself. I've seen this happen several years ago. The only way out of the talent pool is through a high mark. So this is a shameless plug because I know it's going to help you. Come and join my webinars. Come and join my practice webinars, my courses. You know, if any of you are watching this and you've already been on them and you think, yeah, they were awesome, let me know, put something in the comments. Or just check out my Trust Pilot review. If you're watching this on the replay, you know, the Trust Pilot reviews are below. They are awesome and I'm so proud of them. And I'm so grateful and thank you, th thankful to all of you who've left Trust Pilot reviews. I work hard for you so that you can succeed. And then I get those Trust Pilot reviews. And honestly, they make my heart, ah, oh, I just glow when I read some of those. Uh, trust pilot reviews it's just amazing so thank you for contributing and um keeping them really real they're so genuine each one of them is so individual um but i'm so proud of all of you you've done a great job 
As I often say, I'll show you the way. You've got to do the hard work. So that high mark is what's needed. Make sure you're not in a talent pool. Those are the three things. Those are the three things. So folks, I'm about to go in a moment. If you've got any questions, please do let me know. If you're watching this on the replay, then check all the links below to my courses, the webinars, the one-to-ones, the online courses, everything you need to succeed. Everything you need to succeed. I've been doing this for so long. I know exactly how to help you, to support you, to ensure that you get through everything first time with a massive score, massive score. So let's do a few more shout outs. Uh, one more question as well. Um, so Jody, Eric, Ashley, Mike is saying uh, number 12 for March 2024, if I pass everything. I hope that's still the case, Mike. Um, pass everything well, pass everything well. Uh, Rhiannon, how are you doing? Maria and Aki, good to have you on board. All right, folks, time to go. But if you do have any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. This is going live in the Blue Light Facebook group. You can just message me at any time. I'm not going to reply straight away all the time. And if I don't reply, give me a nudge because I get so many messages and emails and calls and everything. Sometimes I get a bit overwhelmed by it all. But I look forward to seeing you soon, folks. Um, it's Friday evening, so this Sunday we've got the uh, Enforce Advancement Group. This is for people going for their promotion boards, the webinar to practice for uh, promotion boards and specialist interviews, uh, followed by, at about half past seven, the final interview webinar, where we're going to practice final interview skills, role play skills for the Met Bolt on, that sort of thing. And then next week is the start of Online Assessment Centre course number 23, Tuesday evening. I might even do one of my little free offers. You can come and join on Tuesday evening for free and see what you think of it. All right, Adina is ending perfectly there by saying thank you and have a great evening. It's time for a naughty little gin and tonic now, I think. I hope uh, you enjoy your evening and have a safe weekend. I'll catch you with you all soon. Bye-bye for now.